Hey there, Chris Cass, Season 3, Episode 5. This is about uh, how, while everybody's been desperately trying to uh, destroy the NRA and counter gun control and all these things, in spite of all the um, mass shootings that have happened in schools and in neighborhoods and in discotheques all over the country, uh, in cities over, over long weekends during the summer, vicious amounts of gun suicide and, uh, gun crime, uh, gang crime, um, various and sundry things that are attributed to white supremacy and all kinds of other, uh, police shootings and all these other things that people have gotten all buzzed up about while this is happening concurrently since 1983 America has become the most gun permissive country that America has ever been since 1983 if you look at a map under constitutional carry in Wikipedia you will realize that since 1983, uh, during which time only Vermont was considered to be a constitutional carry state, now um, more and more states are becoming um, are becoming constitutional carry states, which is to say. Uh, the term constitutional carry, also called permitless carry, unrestricted carry, or Vermont carry, refers to the legal public carrying of a handgun, either openly or concealed, without a license or permit. Now, before I take the first break, uh, there's this perception, because Hollywood makes all the movies, there's this perception that only a gun requires a permit. That is only true in like five to seven states. In most states, which gun owners call free states, there is no obligation to get a permit. There's not even a legal obligation to get a background check. Um, when I started buying guns back in 2011, I bought all my guns through local gun shops or I bought them online or ordered them and had them delivered to FFL dealers, Federal Firearm Licensed Gun Dealers. Um, they would do a background check and I would pay for my firearm and then get it. I would need to show them uh, two or three forms of ID, one including um, a, uh, a, a license or a, a, a you know, state ID. Um, another thing I needed was, let's say, a car registration. Uh, the third thing I could possibly use was a, um, a water bill or a phone bill or whatnot. Uh, two of the three, two or three of the things that needed to match, uh, were my name and my address and the state in which I lived. So, um, but Quickly, I also realized that once I became close friends with people who had guns, that there was no expectation once I was inside the club to ever need to buy a firearm from a local gun shop ever again. All my friend and I needed to do was print out a form from a PDF form that was not even in an, uh, not even a, an official site, but a site from... Uh, private sale transfer uh, pdf.com or whatever and I just get down the legalese fill in each other's names uh, maybe make a photocopy of their uh, CCW or concealed carry permit or their license or whatever uh, co-sign and there would be no need while you know both of us in that parties would be theoretically hold on to these receipts there is no legal precedent for needing to mail anything in for public record so i could 
buy and sell with my friend. I can buy and sell with someone I met on a message board. If I trusted them, I can buy and sell uh, in and out of my family. Uh, the only legal restraint is I can't buy and sell privately outside of my state. So um, there's this perception that everybody who owns a gun has a permit. That might be true in California. Like I said, all the uh, all the scripts about gun, gun play, gun ownership, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The narrative is also. Did you, does he have a gun permit? No, there's no gun permits in Virginia, and we're not even a constitutional constitutional carry state. We're an open carry state. We're considered a free state. Uh, we have shall issue with regards to concealed carry, but we, but you do need a permit to conceal carry. Uh, you need a, a license there's no such thing as a gun license either in, I would say, 42 to 45 of the 50 states either. Um, all those things that you hear on television and the movies are are patently false outside of uh, most states. Let me see. Which, which states require... Gun permits. Let's see. Uh, gun laws in the United States. Licensing. Oh, uh, licensing. I think only three states. Um, Connecticut passed a licensing law. Missouri repealed its licensing law. Um, licensing laws, I don't think, here we go. Permit to purchase, nine states have them. License to own, three states, Illinois, Massachusetts, and New York require a license to own a firearm. New York's law applies only to handguns and um, registration. District of Columbia has a registration law that also functions as a license requirement. Uh, California has a uh, firearm safety certificate. Connecticut has a permit to purchase. D.C. has registration, Hawaii has permit to purchase, Illinois has license to own, Maryland has permit to purchase, Massachusetts has license to own and permit to purchase, handguns only, Michigan has purchased to per permit to purchase, Nebraska has permit to purchase, New Jersey has permit to purchase, New York has license to own, North Carolina has purchase permit to purchase, Rhode Island has permit to purchase, and Washington State has firearm safety certification. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 out of 50 have a permitting or licensing for uh, the ownership or purchases of firearms. Other than that, all the other country, uh, sorry, all the other states um, all you need to do is go into a store, have a background check, show a license and a secondary form of ID. And for most of them, you go home the same day or within an hour, or within 10 minutes. Um, and according to constitutional carry, which, like I said, is completely taking over the country by storm. Uh, here, here's the Wikipedia entry. In the United States, the term constitutional carry, also called permitless carry, unrestricted carry, or Vermont carry, refers to the legal public carrying of a handgun, either openly or concealed without a license or permit. The phrase does not typically refer to the unrestricted carrying of a long gun, which is a rifle, 
including an AR or AK-47 semi-automatic sporting rifle, a knife or other weapons. The scope of the and applicability of constitutional carry might, might vary state by, state by state. The phrase constitutional carry refers uh, reflects the views that the Second Amendment to the U.S. Constitution does not abide restrictions on gun rights, including the right to carry or bear arms. The U.S. Supreme Court had never extensively interpreted the Second Amendment until the landmark case of District of Columbia versus Heller in 2008. Prior to this, a tapestry of different and sometimes conflicting laws about firearm carrying firearms developed across the nation. In deciding the case, the court found that self-defense was a, quote, central component of the Second Amendment, unquote, and D.C.'s handgun ban was invalidated. The court further stated that some state or local gun controls are allowed. The Heller case was extended by the Supreme Court in the 2010 decision, McDonald v. Chicago, which held that the Second and Fourteenth Amendments to, of the, to the U.S. Constitution were fully incorporated and thus the right to, quote, keep and bear arms applies to the states and not in in a watered-down version but fully applicable and limit states and local governments in enacting laws that restrict this individual and fundamental right to keep and bear arms for self-defense. Um, in 1986... Wait, hold on. Right now, let's see... As of July 16th, 2021, as of June 16th, 2021, here you go. Here's the list of constitutional carry states where you can carry permitlessly, permitlessly and without uh, license. You can conceal carry or open carry, concealed carry, um, a pistol, a firearm, a handgun uh, without ever getting anybody's approval without getting the sheriff's approval, without taking a CCW class, without getting a, uh, going through the extensive rigmarole of paying for permits. Like it took me months to get my CCW and they had, they hand print, they, they, they palm printed both my hands. And I think they did an, an eye, uh, retina scan and all this stuff. As of June 16, 2021, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, Idaho, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Maine, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, New Hampshire, North Dakota, Oklahoma, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Vermont, West Virginia, and Wyoming do not require a permit to carry a loaded concealed firearm for any person of age who is not prohibited from owning a firearm. Permitless carry in North Dakota is applicable to residents only. Non-residents mu must have a permit to carry a handgun concealed or openly. Permitless concealed carry in Mississippi only covers certain manners of carrying. Permitless carry in Oklahoma applies to both residents and non-residents. 21 plus as well as 18 plus non-residents who can carry without a permit in their home state. All aforementioned jurisdictions do not require a permit to openly carry either except for nor either except for North Dakota and certain localities in Missouri. On July 26, 2014, Washington DC became a permitless carry jurisdiction for a few days when its ban on carrying a handgun was ruled in unconstitutional. The ruling was not stayed. The ruling said that any residents who had a legally registered handgun could carry it without a permit, and non-residents without felony convictions could carry as well. The ruling was then stayed on July 29, 2014. In June 2015, following a victory in a class action lawsuit brought by Damas de la Segunda Enmienda, Ladies of the Second Amendment, an affiliate of the Second Amendment Foundation, the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico's carrying conceal, uh, licensing regulations were struck down, eliminating the requirement to obtain a permit. On October 31, 2016, the Supreme Court of Puerto Rico denied a motion for reconsideration of a previous Court of Appeals decision that had found the Weapons Act to be constitutional. 
Vermont does not have any provision for issue of concealed carry licenses, as none has ever been necessary. As such, Vermont residents wishing to carry handguns in other states must, must acquire a license from a state which is valid in the destination. All other constitutional carry states previously had concealed carry license requirements prior to adoption of unrestricted carry laws and continue to issue licenses on a shall-issue basis for the purpose of interstate reciprocity, allowing residents of the state to travel to other states with a concealed weapon abiding by that state's law. So it goes state by state, but this is all new. This is all new since like 20, whatever I said, 20, uh, since 20, 2008. Um, and then, you know, 2010. Uh, so all of this is happening very, very quickly. Um, it's amazing. So, so many states are now green, uh, if you look at the map. And, and the rest are mostly shall issue, which means that if you apply for a concealed carry permit, uh, unless there's really anything in your background, uh, such as, you know, felonies, etc., maybe misdemeanors, I don't know, but anything in your past such as that, um, you will get a concealed carry permit. Concealed carry uh, is so common now, maybe not in the cities that my listeners are in, but in general, the laws to prevent people from uh, secretly carrying firearms on their person without your knowing is so completely permissible now that you had better second, you better think twice about ever trying to assault anybody thinking that uh, things would ever be a fair fight. Like it's the joke that they make about don't mess with someone in Texas because they are probably armed, is becoming more and more ubiquitous and commonplace. And the barrier to entry, which is, you know, going through the eight hours of training and applying and spending hundreds of dollars on a permit and then going to the, uh, going to the sheriff's department and having, you know, having your fingerprints taken and all that other kind of stuff, it's uh, it's way less now. It's it's as if um, by virtue of being eighteen or twenty one, you automatically have a driver's license without ever taking a driver's test, without ever anybody permitting your car or uh, requiring you to carry it to have insurance or anything. Just whatever you want to drive on the streets, that's fine. I don't think all y'all know that, so. I thought I'd share that with you as you, uh, all y'all might be, might be, you, you might be stuck in the days during, I think between 1995 and 2005 or whatever, when there was an uh, assault rifle ban and high capacity, um, magazines and, uh, Alexa, what years were the assault weapons ban? Sorry, I don't know that. Hey, Google. What years were the assault weapons banned? I don't know, but I found these results on search. <sighs> I don't know. I guess I have to freaking look it up myself. Assault... Assault weapons ban, federal assault weapons ban. It's about uh, 1994 to 2004. Like uh, during those years, um, the Public Safety and Recreational Firearms Use Protection Act or federal assault weapons ban, AWB, was a subsection of the Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act of 1984, a United States federal law which included a prohibition on the manufacture of civilian use of certain semi-automatic firearms. 
that were defined as assault weapons, as well as certain ammunition magazines that were defined as large capacity. The 10-year ban was passed by the U.S. Congress on September 13, 1994, following a close 52-48 to vote in the U.S. Senate and was signed into law by U.S. President Bill Clinton on the same day. The ban applied only to weapons manufactured after the date of the ban's enactment, which is funny because every AR-15 and every high-capacity magazine was then grandfathered. So there was a huge black market buy and sell of all guns made before September 13, 1994. Um, the ban applied only to weapons manufactured after the date of a ban's ena enactment. It expired on September 13, 2004, in accordance with its sunset provision. Several constitutional challenges were filed against the provision of the ban, but all were rejected by the courts. There were multiple attempts to renew the ban, but none succeeded. Studies have shown that the ban had little effect on overall criminal activity, firearm, homicide, and the lethality of gun crimes. There is tentative evidence that the frequency of mass shootings may have slightly decreased while the ban was in effect. Now, let's see. Anyway, so that, that has been dead since 2004, and ever since things have been getting, getting way more permissive. Uh, there have been restrictions on import-export, there have been restrictions on importing surplus ammo, uh, importing surplus firearms, importing surplus uh, AK semi-automatic AK-47s and semi-automatic uh, Soviet and Eastern Bloc and Chinese SKSs, and all kinds of other things like that. But it hasn't affected um, I mean, we won't even go into uh, methods that are loopholes that allow people to fabricate their own uh, firearms. There've never, there's never been a law that's permitted you from making a firearm and using it uh, in your using it personally. Uh, there's no requirement to need a serial number on a firearm that you. Uh, that you create of your own handiwork. There's a subculture of, they call them ghost guns. Uh, you call them ghost guns. Gun people call them 80% blanks, 80%ers, in which case the, and there's only parts of guns that are considered guns. The, um, with regards to AR-15s, what's called the lower, the part with the hand grip, uh, the place you put the magazine and 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 the trigger assembly that is all in a an assembly called the lower the lower is a, is legally speaking must be serialized if it's a real gun that is to be bought and sold uh, and but everything else the barrel the upper the bolt uh, even the hand grip the trigger assembly the uh, the buffer tube the stock, the gas system, the sights, the handle, the, um, the forward assist, everything you can buy online. The only thing that's considered to be the firearm is the little bit of uh, aluminum that is, that is, uh, which, uh, that is where the, the sear and the hammer live. Um, it's not even the sear or the hammer. It's the little assembly that uh, that contains those things. It's called a lower. Um, of, on a handgun, for example, a Glock, the only thing that you can't buy online is the bit of, uh, of plastic um, polymer that, uh, that houses the trigger uh, assembly that, that houses... The um, that houses the magazine, uh, that houses the you know it's basically the grip, uh, the trigger guard, and the I guess they call it the dust cover that goes to the front of the gun along with the rail, but the um, the slide, the barrel, 
uh, all the guts that make up the sear and the hammer and the trigger mechanism and the uh, uh, the um, the slide release and uh, the the spring uh, the spring guide the barrel like I said the sights etc none of those things are considered to be a firearm only the lower of the uh, of the of the gun so you can buy 90 percent 80 percent of all your parts and then when it comes to building your own firearm you can actually buy uh 80 percent completed um lowers for air 15s lowers for for glocks and then all you need to do is is get a dremel uh and a drill and if you're uh smart you will get a a um a guide a template and then you will uh, just drill out and dremel out parts of it until you've, you know, what is it that uh, Michelangelo said? Um, I, I, when I look at a piece of marble, all I can see is the sculpture inside. So that's what an 80% lower is. It is basically a enough of a enough close enough to a statue, but enough of just a big hunk of marble that it's not taxed or considered to be a work of art yet. And then you get all the, um, uh, what is it? How do you, uh, all the, all the chip away by numbers, the, uh, I guess you use a hammer and a chisel. Uh, you get all the, templates for chiseling away all the extra marble until you're left with a David or a Pieta. So that's all I know. Um, the only thing that I can think of now is the real, the real time bomb that Trump left us after his uh, single, um, potentially first, or only administration, the time bomb, the toxic, to toxic time bomb that he left is he filled, I don't know why Obama didn't do this, but he, he grabbed, you know, sadly, uh, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away. Her timing was terrible, but, uh, now it's majority conservative in the, in the Supreme court. But also now there's been a huge takeover by, uh, the Republicans, by the conservatives, by the tea party and by the MAGA people there have been, and these aren't even neocons. These are, these are, um, second amendment conservatives. These aren't, uh, you know, um, neolibs or neo, these are not neolibs or neocons. These are evangelical Christians. These are, uh, devoted Catholics. These are people who are committed to originalist interpretation of the constitution. These are people who believe in God and the devil and heaven. These are people who believe in an afterlife. These are people who believe in demons and angels. These are people who believe um, that, uh, that abortion is a sin and that there is a single-minded attempt at killing generations of people. They might even believe that the sacrifice of all these aborted babies is some sort of blood sacrifice to some sort of demonic ball or some sort of luciferian thing i'm not saying they're all like this i'm not saying any are like this i'm saying that there are a lot of federal judges now that have tenure lifetime appointments that owe their appointments to donald j trump and his posse including Steve Bannon and all these other people, and as a result have been put in like a bunch of moles, like a bunch of, of, of cells into the federal and state judicial system and will have the kind of effect that uh, the judge for the... Um, 
I mean, listen, the judge for the Kyle Rittenhouse uh, trial was an appointed Democrat. He was an appointed Democrat. So I'm not going to, but a, a person like him who is a law and order judge, a Western supremacy judge, a norms and values judge, a constitutional originalist judge, and a Ten Commandments judge. And uh, that's the gift that keeps on giving. That's the gift that doesn't care about getting voted out by Joe Biden. Uh, that is a persistent interpretation of gun law and a persistent interpretation of law that will chip away at Roe v. Wade that is going to completely change the pH balance of the entire country in a way secretly behind your back while you take over the streets with BLM, while you take over the streets with Build Back Better, there is a deep legalistic framework that is dismantling the restrictions of those things that disallow uh, Bubba and, and Josiah and Jacob uh, from always having a uh, firearm on them, always having a gun on them, and then having the judicial uh, backing that if they are in any well, and if they feel personally threatened, that they personally believe that their life or the life of someone around them is threatened, uh, they can use that deadly force with a plum. They might be attacked by a, uh, they might, you know, there might be tons and tons and tons of AUSAs uh, who are out there trying to make their name as prosecutors on behalf of the state, but there's enough precedence amongst the judges and amongst the law enforcement offices, including federal and state judges, that quite possibly um, it'll become so commonplace that more and more prosecutors cannot prosecute someone who, who uh, uses lethal force as a personal defense, be it in the middle of a riot, in the middle of their home, in their, uh, their cul-de-sac, wherever they are, even if they're, quote, not supposed to be where they are, the fact that they should not be molested and have no expectation of being molested or physically harassed or assaulted uh, means that they can uh, go ahead and take the life of the person who dare put their hands on them. Um, that's where everything's going. So while there might be a perception uh, do you hear the people sing, singing a song of angry men? You know, uh, this is not Les Miserables. Oh, rather, it is Les Miserables. Les Miserables, I've only read the musical. I've always stopped reading uh, Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. But I do know that what it is, is it's... Uh, it's um, a really exciting summer of a couple nights where a bunch of revolutionary vanguard of the proletariats uh, stand up against against the man uh, by creating a barricade and being willing to die to fight against it. And they feel connected and they feel in love and they feel um, brotherly love and they feel um, like they can do anything. And then they're just completely decimated no, I will not use the word decimated. They were completely razed. They were destroyed. They were dismembered. They were turned into mincemeat. They were turned into ground chicken. So, uh, same thing happened to uh, the Wall Street. Walk, uh, walk on Wall Street or something like that. Um, just... Uh, be careful out there, okay? Be careful out there. You know this the uh, the uh, the Billy Bobs and Hillbillies out there say things like, "You can't behave that kind of way in my town." 
Because in my town, you don't know everybody's got a gun. You don't dare break into my house. I'm going to shoot you. Shoot you dead. Uh, but how many of those, how many, how many freaking states are now? Uh, and that doesn't even include concealed carry permitted shall carry states. So... I just want to wish you luck. After the break, I usually take more breaks than this, but I'm on a roll. After the break, I will give you all my deets. Welcome back. This is Chris Cass, Season 3, Episode 5. My name's Chris Abraham. I'm at chrisabraham.com, C-H-R-I-S-A-B-R-A-H-A-M.com, also abraham.su. You can email email me at chris at abraham.su. My phone number is plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. You can use that to connect with me on Signal, WhatsApp, um, uh... What's the other one? Telegram. Uh, you can find me on um, Skype at Chris Abraham, one word. Uh, on Facebook, I'm at Chris Abraham. On YouTube, I'm on Chris Abraham. Um, on Twitter, I'm at Chris, I'm at Chris Abraham. Um, Instagram, I'm at Chris Abraham. I think on TikTok, I'm Christopher Abraham. I think maybe... I think Christopher J. Abraham maybe on WhatsApp. I don't know who uses WhatsApp anymore. I think WhatsApp is a hookup app. Anytime I hear anybody talk about WhatsApp, it's like, WhatsApp me? No, 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 no. I'm talking about Snapchat. I don't even know what my Snapchat is. But I feel like Snapchat is is the cliche of the thing you ask for from a girl if you want to be her boyfriend. Um, and that's it. That's it, I think. Oh. Uh, you can listen to this on YouTube. Uh, I'm banned on YouTube for might be two weeks, might be two months. So I guess this is not going to be up there for a while. But uh, I don't think many people listen to it there. So it's uh, anchor.fm slash Chris Abraham is my first line of defense. And you can find me on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher and Spotify and uh, Amazon um, Music. You can find me on like uh, iHeartRadio and uh, TuneIn. And you can find me on Podcast Addict and Pod This and Pod That and Podcast Index and all these places. So please, no matter what, if you use iTunes or whatever, please write a review. Give me some stars. I think that in uh, Apple iTunes on uh, Apple Podcasts, I think there's one five-star rating. And don't tell anybody, but I think it's just me. So why don't you join me in saying awesome things about me? Love you. Mean it. And I'll talk to you soon. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs>